I've been diving in this area since 2005. What I've seen changing in the water is the entire cave system changed their face. It was a cave system that was brilliant white, and a few years ago, everything turns black. And the reason is related to the human activity. It's one of the world's most Instagrammable destinations. Good morning, guys. It is our first full day in Tulum. Frequented by glamorous fashionistas in search of a bohemian paradise. But eco hippies descending on Tulum for a dose of wellness and jungle rave are poisoning the world's largest underwater river system. When you flush the toilet, it goes straight into the aquifer. There are chemical and pharmaceutical compounds, and there are some tracer concentrations of cocaine. And attracting cartels from across the region. Hay mucho narcotráfico y está en disputa de muchos grupos que quieren tomar el control. Now, as construction of a new airport is underway, local scientists are working to expose the extent of the damage triggered by Tulum's rapid expansion in a race to save this ecological haven. We are relying on having healthy reefs and clear water to keep surviving. We are going to the cenote named uh, Tres Cruces. This is created by the rain. Please don't fall inside. In the Tulum area, there are thousands and thousands of cenotes. The water lands up on the jungle and penetrates slowly in the porosity of this uh, uh, material and then uh, arrive into the aquifer. The aquifer that you can see behind me. It's very fragile. With fingers, we can, we can work it. And the water penetrates everywhere in the porosity. If you put some uh, pollutant in the water, it will arrive down quite quick. The importance of the aquifer is extreme. This is one of the biggest drinkable deposit of water in the entire planet. If we lose the water, all the humanity is affected. This massive underwater reserve is now under threat. Tulum, which just a decade ago was a small fishing village, has transformed into a luxury destination for hipster vacationers. Over the past decade, the population has almost doubled and the number of residential developments catering for wealthy Western tourists has exploded. However, the local infrastructure has not grown with it. In hotel zone, there is no sewage system. Hotels should have their own treatment plants. The biggest negative impact on development is the pollution of the aquifer, the groundwater system, by all this tourism flushing the toilets without a septic system. Currently, only 10 to 15% of buildings are connected to the sewage system, which means the majority of wastewater is seeping through porous rock into the underwater rivers that connect to the Caribbean Sea. We have the Mesoamerican barrier reef system. Many of our reefs are in a critical state. A healthy coral, you will be able to see the skeleton, the colors. It can be yellow, it can be orange, it can be purple. What we are going to see is like a carpet of macroalgae on top of the coral. For the last 12 years, we have seen the macroalgae cover double. If we don't diminish this macroalgae cover, the corals eventually can die. This algae growth has been exacerbated by an influx of nutrients from the sewage that has overwhelmed local reefs as well as the inland aquifer, destabilizing the local ecosystems the water runs through. We are going to see a cenote here, and as you can see, it is surrounded by the mangroves. These kind of mangroves are typical in the Mexican Caribbean and normally this kind of ecosystem help us to treat the water in a natural way. And it's connecting the forests, the mangroves, the seagrass and the coral reef. I think the worst thing that we have found here in the Tulum area and in the aquifer comes from nutrients because the flush of the toilet. There are a lot of heavy metals there are chemical and pharmaceutical compounds as ibuprofen, naproxen, and there are some tracer concentrations of drugs as cocaine that all of these compounds there were not there four years ago. 
tourists jump into the cenote, they can swim between all of these kind of pollutants. If we have high concentrations of these bacteria that come from the flush of the toilet, uh, the people can get a stomach ache and they can have skin problems because of this uh, kind of pollutants. Tulum was a destination that was not described as a party scene. We are a, a small destination and we can't support that influx of people. Parties are done wherever, in the jungle, and of course there's a lack of sustainability, to say the least. We're here in Tulum, in the middle of the jungle, and this night we're going to have a epic party at the light of the moon. Illegal jungle rings, advertised as rituals led by shamanistic DJs, are attracting party goers. No se puede ver mi cara porque la policía, narcos y políticos persiguen a la gente que organiza eventos. La policía, pena de cárcel para organizadores, narcos, extorsiones. Traces of the drugs being consumed in Tulum end up in the natural water supply. La fiesta está cerca de cenote y cerca de cavernas de hace de 65 millones de años. La razón de que la fiesta sea en la selva es porque nosotros queremos un concepto y también una cultura de lo que es cuidar la selva, entender lo que son la cultura maya hoy en día aquí, que viven y son nativos de aquí de la selva. Nosotros aquí vamos a tener varios rituales, se hacen ayahuasca, se hacen dimite. Whenever you do a party, there comes people that want to sell drugs in said party. It affects us greatly on the violence. Drug-related crime has risen by 783% over the past three years, with several reports of violence between rival gangs. We sell drugs to all the tourists. Anything you need, cocaine, weed, ecstasy, whatever you need. Are you part of that cartel? Yes, sir. Which one? Aloha. However, none of that appears to have deterred tourists. A new airport is set to open in 2023 and numerous new properties, hotels and resorts are being planned in anticipation of the large future influx of holiday goers. Scientists and hoteliers fear that these precious ecosystems will collapse unless drastic sustainability practices are implemented urgently. The GDP of Mexico, more than 80% comes from these touristic activities. So like if you don't see our reef that is healthy and colorful and vibrant and full of fishes, people will stop coming over here. I think my greatest fear of the development in Tulum is the lawlessness, the not being able to hold somebody accountable. And what that means is that it could be a wild, wild west situation where if there is no consequence or you're not held accountable, you can do whatever you want. And the first thing that's going to suffer is the environment, without a doubt. I think it is time to step back a bit, see how we can offer adequate sustainability, actually invest in putting something back to our environment and, and not upsetting that, that balance, not growing too fast. As a tourist, you should be responsible and asking whatever place you are staying at, are you connected to the treatment plant? Are the wastewater getting treated? Because I don't want to be part of the problem business owners should realize that you're not compromised as a successful business by doing the right thing and being responsible. Because we're lucky Tulum is in incredibly high demand. It's thriving. So why not do things right?